Hello, and welcome to episode 18 of Urban Legends, for Southern God of War 20 story time. We're now up to the third story of the classic Dog Tales chapter. Not my dog. A certain shaggy dog story that's been circulating for nearly 75 years bounds me. And I'll be dogged if I can figure out whether I'm barking up the wrong tree when I call it a legend. This is the lassie come home of animal legends that keeps reappearing after I've decided it has gone forever. The story begins when someone is invited to visit the home of a person who is usually wealthier or socially superior. The uncomfortable visitor is unsure about the etiquette about etiquette the ma and manners are made wor matters are made worse I think that's a teakwit about unsure about etiquette and matters are made worse when a large lively dirty beast of a dog follows the cellar at the caller into the house while the caller tries to respect social amenities the dog tracks mud in gobbles the snacks and pours the furniture the conversation becomes strained as the caller rises to leave, the hostess, with one eye on the wreckage, remarks icily, Don't forget to take your dog. My dog? the caller says. I thought it was yours. People telling this story always supply some corroborating details. For example, a version published in 1991 in the Salt Lake City, Utah newspaper, gave the names of newlyweds, the youngest couple on the block, who had purchased a snug old bungalow and spent heavily to remodel and decorate the place. When their next door neighbour, an ancient eccentric and former socialite came to call, she was followed into the house by a big black Labrador when the dog chased the newlyweds pet Siamese, the room was trashed, and as the aghast visitor rose to leave, the hostess begged, Please don't leave your dog. Punchline. My dog? My dear young woman, I thought that beast was yours. But there are too many other versions of the story circulating to credit this as absolutely 100% true and original. The earliest version of Not My Dog I found was in Lucy Maud Montgomery's 1924 children's book, Emily Climbs. I suspect Montgomery, or, um, Montgomery, author of Anne of Green Gables, was adapting a story she'd heard perhaps on Prince Edward Island, Canada, where she grew up. Emily, the young heroine, mistakes a fairly large fluffy white dog for her hostess pet Chow, Chun Chin. When she calls on Miss Janet Royal, a brilliant successful woman, the dog covered with mud, and certainly not a Chow, follows her into the elegant parlour and makes a mess. And as she leaves, Emily is asked, hadn't you better take your dog? Punchline. I, I thought he was yours, your chow. Time passes. Then the story shows up in Hours of, uh, House of Ill Fame, a 1985 book by Simon Hoggart, a columnist for The Observer, London. Hoggart tells it about a member of parliament who, while doing the rounds of his constituency, is invited into one home for tea. He is followed in by a large dog which, to everyone's surprise and embarrassment, suddenly cocked its leg, uh, cocked its leg and peed on the floor, 
You guessed it, the dog does not belong to the host. A couple of years pass, and the story shows up again, this time in Ed Regis's 1987 book, Who Got Einstein's Office? In this version, said to have occurred at Princeton in 1946, the famous mathematician Julian Bigelow called on his distinguished colleague John von Neumann and was followed into the house by a great Dane. It doesn't take a genius to figure out the rest of the story. And again, this time in Uncommon, in Uncommon Genius, a 1990 book by Denise G. Shekhyan, no, Shek Shek about winners of the MacArthur Genius Awards. This story seems to have an attraction for geniuses. Shekhyan recalls an interview she had with a University of California anthropologist in Berkeley during which a big old mangy dog, or mangy dog, a bear-like creature, a big smelly animal, etc., followed her inside. She concludes, I asked her if we could let her dog outside for a while, just until we finished. My dog, she says. You mean that, you mean he's not your dog? Could such an incident actually happen? I have no reason to doubt any of these published accounts. But has it also happened to what we might call ordinary people who don't write books or articles about it? Well, it did, in fact, also happen to a man in Ashland, Ohio, who wrote me in 1990 about one time in 1970 when his family was visiting friends in Florida. A beagle bound, a beagle hound followed them into the friend's home climbed on a chair and started eating from a plate. It was not either family's dog, of course, and so wrote the man, the dog got the bomb's rush. I need mention also the lady from Middleton, uh, Rhode Island, who wrote me about the time when she lived in California around 1975, her mother's supervisor came to visit, followed into the house by a large dog and so forth. I have other accounts, but the best variation on the story I have was sent to me in 1991, marked for your Not My Dog file. It came from Debbie Brennan of Moss Beach, California, who wrote that she kept goats in the 1960s. One time a new neighbour asked her, asked to have her female goat bred with Brennan's male goat. The neighbour arrived leading the goat and followed by a little girl who closely watched the mating asking several questions which were answered truthfully but tactfully. Afterwards, Debbie invited the neighbour to have a cup of tea and asked if her little girl would like a cookie. Punchline, that's not my little girl. She just followed me in from the gate. By then, the child had wandered off. I wonder if she had a big shaggy dog tagging along. Expanded from my newspaper column, Urban Legends, for the week of July 1st, 1991, when I announced in June 1992 that my syndicated column was to be discontinued. I heard from Jacob and Helen Schneider of Westerville, Ohio, who wrote that it seemed like their last chance to report their experience of a dozen years before. Invited to dinner with one of her members 
of their daughter's high school drill team with other members of her daughter's high school drill team they were followed into the host home by a huge black dog the dog sniffed at all the potluck dishes set out and on the table yeah, set out on the table and the host finally asked jake how long have you had that dog it was not of course the schneiders nor the hosts and the incident spawned to catch a threat to a catchphrase spawned a catchphrase still used between couples remember that dog my conclusion this is truly an experience that repeats itself and it has generated an oft retold story so in my dog search in my dog search for the truth i call it almost a legend And that was not my dog. Join me next time as I read The Licked Hand. Until then, bye.